did from around 15 years ago and I'm really unhappy with it, so I'm going to show you how I want to change it. I'm quite happy with the horses, but the background will be going completely. Before I start, I've actually got someone I'd like you to meet, and here he is. Say hello to my little friend. No? This is Gizmo. Lovely little friend. With, I sent a picture to my computer, and to be honest, yeah, my computer is very basic and I'm no computer whiz, so I'm going to open the photo using paint. Right, once there, I can delete the horrible background trees and sky and hopefully create a blank canvas. It gives me a clearer picture of the scene without getting too confused by the background parts that I don't really want. It really is a great way to change a painting without it getting messy with the oils because I'm still not sure what I'm going to do. It will stop me being distracted by the background and hopefully get my juices going and stir my imagination. So now I'm just going to finish off blanking this sky out. So that's the sky blanked out and I think I'm going to, I've decided to put a, a little pond, or see how it looks with a little pond near the front. Actually I think that looks really good. Now I just got to get the old grey mare working overtime on what to do next. Mish money penny. A few dodgy black and white copies. <laughs> After playing around with them, I've got some rough ideas of painting a barn, a house and some fields and I think a viaduct in the background. Right, the next step is to actually get the painting out of the frame. Just be careful taking out the metal shards, holding it in place because they're quite sharp and you don't want to cut your fingers and have blood squirting everywhere and spoiling your picture. Once the painting's out, um, I can use some fine aluminium uh, oxide paper, uh, size 120, just to send away the raised paint edges. Right, now that's done and all sanded down nice and smoothly, I can get some water and take off the excess dust. Right, now it's on the easel, we can actually get cracking on with some painting. I'm just showing you how flat this surface is now, now it's been sanded, and it's ideal for painting over the top keeps it lovely and smooth. So this is the drawing I'm going to be using. Um, I'm going to paint a little wall at the front with the house behind with some ivy growing on the side of it. This will be the actual house that um, I'm going to copy. This is the barn with a couple of doors and it should look like this um, hopefully once it's done. Right, now it's on the easel, we're ready to crack on with some painting and start the blocking in stage. 
If I was using a blank canvas, I would use, I'd probably use acrylics because they dry really quick and it saves a lot of time. Also, I'd probably be more accurate with the mixing the colours and their shades. But since I'm not working to an actual photograph and just using my imagination, I can be a bit looser with the colours. I found this great little bargain for a couple of quid. It's a uh, tear off palette paper. It's brilliant for oils, and instead of clearing up the paint afterwards, you can just throw it away and start a new sheet. I'm using an old flat brush and ivory black with a touch of liquine to help thin it out and help it dry as well. I'm just going to make a quick outline where the buildings need to be. Don't worry about the background still showing through because when we do the, do the other layers they'll be hidden anyway. I've got ivory black, burnt sienna, cadmium red, cadmium yellow. Right, next I'm going to add a touch of titanium white to the mix for the house and barn section. As you can see, it's already a big change, and I think for the better. I hope you agree that it's uh, coming on lovely jubbly. I'm going to fix the sky now using titanium white and a little cerulean blue.
I'm going to add in a couple of coats here because it's looking quite stormy at the moment. <laughs> um, I'm going to use the same mix now for the uh, pond, which is the titanium white and the cerulean blue. I'm just uh, tidying up now and going to leave the paint to dry. The paint is dried overnight now, so I'm going to add some hills using an old round brush and potato green, cadmium yellow and a touch of burnt sienna and a little touch of titanium white. I'm just going to add a little touch of uh, cadmium yellow just to uh, bring out the richness in the foreground grass and to cover these bloody background trees. I'm just adding a touch of sap green and ivory black to the mix just to uh, darken the hills. I'm using ivory black, burnt amber and sap green to highlight these dark shadows. I'm still painting pretty loosely because I'm still finding my way with the composition. Uh, once everything's in place and I'm happy with it, I will then become tight with the colours and details but that's in the next stages. Anyway, I've now decided to widen the path because I thought the horses were too close to the pond. So I pushed the fence backwards a metre or so and made the wooden posts slightly thinner. I'm using a lighter shade of green now just to remind me where the path will start. Again, I will add detail to this later on.
I'm just adding some bushes and weeds to the edge of the pond using burnt umber, phalo green, sap green and cadmium yellow. Hopefully this will start to give the painting some depth. I'm going to add another thin layer to the sky using cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue, titanium white and liquine and we should be getting somewhere with covering the old tree canopy now.